Hey everyone, Glenn here from rewiringtinnitus.com. I wanted to make another video today to talk to you a little bit more about habituation and this time I'd like to cover some of the strategies that people use to habituate and also the strategy that I use to habituate which I think is somewhat unique um, and I was I stumbled on by accident. Um, but first we'll do a little bit of a refresher um, in case you missed my first video. Habituation is the mental process by which we can tune out meaningless background noise and we do it automatically all the time. It's how we're able to carry on conversations in restaurants and not be distracted by the noise of the people talking around us. It's how we're able to work in noisy environments like a coffee shop or a busy sales office. And it is completely possible to habituate to the sound of your tinnitus. Now, I know a lot of people who have really bad tinnitus are probably thinking, well, my tinnitus is so loud, so noisy, um, so intrusive that I would never be able to habituate. I would never be able to tune it out or ignore it. And on the one hand, they're partially right, but not because it's so loud. The reason they can't ignore it is because their body is reacting as if they were in danger. They're in a low level perpetual state of fight or flight and it's simply impossible to ignore or to habituate to any sound that implies danger. Now if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. You would never want to not hear the sound of something dangerous. And when we do hear the sound of something dangerous, we react automatically. Uh, we have a stress response. Now normally when that danger is resolved, our parasympathetic nervous system kicks in and restores homostasis. Uh, we start to calm down and, and, and we, come, we, we, we resolve and we come back to normal and center. But with tinnitus, the sound is constant. So you're in this vicious cycle. Uh, you're constantly being triggered. And the harder you try to ignore it, the harder your brain will fight to redirect your attention to what it perceives as the threat. So on the one hand, the people who think they can't ignore it, they're right. As things stand right now, they can't ignore it. However, it is possible to habituate if you remove the obstacle to habituation, which is the negative conditioned response. You can rewire your brain. You can rewire your response to the sound. And once you do that, habituation can happen naturally. Uh, so how, how do people habituate? Um, for a long time, the most popular uh, approach uh, is known as tinnitus retraining therapy. It was developed in the early 90s. And the idea is fairly straightforward. Um, the patient is first fitted with hearing aid-like devices that play white noise at a volume that partially masks the sound of your tinnitus. Uh, the idea here is that if you can turn down the perceived volume to a more comfortable level, that it won't be as bothersome, it won't be as intrusive, and it over time you will be able to habituate to the sound because you're being bothered by it less you're being triggered by it less uh, along with this partial masking uh, sound therapy the patient will see a cognitive behavioral therapist and they will work with the therapist to try to um, to try to replace that negative emotional response with one that is emotionally neutral now this this works for a lot of people, um, not necessarily for everyone, uh, but it but it it has been fairly successful over the years. The only problem that I see is that it can take a long time and that it can be expensive. Uh, the time that it takes to succeed is not necessarily a barrier to entry, but the financial investment is. The sound masking devices can often cost thousands of dollars, and all the doctor visits and therapy visits can add up. Um, it does work. It does address the underlying um, problem that prevents habituation from happening in the first place. But for some people, it may not be the best financial option. Uh, what worked for me was something, a simple exercise that I, I stumbled onto by accident. Um, I, for a long time, uh, after I was diagnosed with Meniere's disease, I used meditation as, as part of my way of coping. It helped me manage the anxiety and the fear that came with the diagnosis and it helped it helped me primarily with stress it helped me keep my stress levels down which helped prevent my symptoms uh, from flaring up and as my Meniere symptoms improved my tinnitus did it my tinnitus actually got a lot worse so I, I wasn't having vertigo I wasn't as dizzy anymore um, but my tinnitus was much much louder than it had been so I was meditating for a long time, um, but I found it incredibly difficult. And 
over time, it became very frustrating. The, the tinnitus was very intrusive and it made it very difficult to focus on my breathing or a mantra, depending on the type of meditation I was doing. So one night, uh, while I was laying in bed trying to meditate, it, it occurred to me, I, I kept trying to ignore the sound. I kept trying to avoid it and it was becoming harder and harder to do that. Um, but meditation was helping me. So I thought, well, what if I focused on the sound instead? If meditation is just focusing your awareness and concentration onto a single thing, like your, like your breathing or a mantra um, or, or some mental image, why couldn't I focus on the sound instead? Um, it sort of came to me in a whim, on a whim, and I, and I decided to give it a try. I was, I was nervous. To, to focusing on the sound that was driving me crazy seemed like a crazy thing to do. Um, but I, I gave it a go. The curious part of me went out. And the first thing I noticed was that it was difficult, but not for the reasons that I was expecting. I thought it would be very stressful to, to meditate to this on the, while focusing on the sound of my tinnitus. But the first thing I noticed was that my, as my mind started to wander, which is something that happens with all forms of, of meditation, it was wandering away from my focus on the sound. So all of a sudden I was having these brief, 15 to 20 second daydream mind wandering moments where the tinnitus wasn't bothering me at all. My perception of it had completely disappeared. And as soon as I would catch my, my, myself with my mind drifting and bring my focus back, I, it suddenly hit me. And I was like, oh my God, I, I, I just, for a, few, for a few seconds there, I didn't hear my tinnitus at all. So that was sort of my first, my first major insight. And I kept practicing. And when I finished that first session, I was very calm. Um, I had been meditating for a while at that point, uh, but so I had I was somewhat experienced. Um, but when I came out of that session, I felt very relaxed, and it seemed quieter. It wasn't quieter. I, when I thought about it, I, I I could still hear it very loudly, but it wasn't bothering me. I was calm, and and I and I felt good. And I and it was it was this aha moment. It was this moment where I was like. I might, you know, this this is this is something different. I'm having a result that I haven't had before. Uh, it was something tangible to to work with, and I didn't understand what was happening at the time. Um, but in research and and now I realize that what happened was my brain was starting to associate the calm and relaxation, the deep relaxation of meditation, with the sound of my tinnitus. Because I was focusing on the sound while I was going into these deep meditative states, my brain was associating the sound with these deep meditative states and it was overwriting my negative response. And very quickly, I was able to habituate uh, with this technique. I started seeing results. Um, I mean, like I mentioned before, after that first session, I, I, I felt remarkably better. It didn't, it wasn't permanent, but over the following couple days, I started to, to see more results that I would, I would find that I would have moments throughout the day where it would slip from my awareness. Um, and after a couple weeks, it was, I was almost at the point of full, uh, habituation. Um, since then I've actually been able to figure out a few things. I know that it can be very stressful to, to focus on the sound of your tinnitus, especially if you have no experience with meditation and especially if it's very loud. Um, I know that for a lot of you, even just the thought of doing something like this is terrifying. But I've noticed and I've found a couple different things to make it easier. Um, the first thing that I that I thought of was that we can take the partial masking aspect of tinnitus retraining therapy and apply it to this tinnitus focused meditation by using ambient background noise, whether it's music or relaxation sounds like, like a waterfall or a stream or, or white noise, it really doesn't matter what kind of noise you use uh, as long as you find it relaxing, and play it at a volume that partially masks the sound of our tinnitus, say reduces the perceived volume 50 to 70%. You're, you're masking about 50 to 70% of the sound of your tinnitus. It makes it much easier to meditate to because you're focusing on a sound that seems much quieter but you get the same benefits uh, so it just makes it much easier to approach for for someone new um, and just starting out now I know some people have hearing loss and sound therapy based approaches may not be ap applicable um, but it's if it is it's still something that can make it a lot easier to address now I've also found a lot of other strategies that have, have been able to increase 
my relaxation response and, and increase the and speed up the time it takes me to enter into these deep meditative states and I can talk more about that in a future video but for now I, I hope that may, I hope I was able to communicate clearly what it was that worked for me I was able to use this tinnitus meditation technique and I was able to habituate very quickly and in a, in a in a strange way I don't see my tinnitus as something negative anymore I was able to turn it into a tool that worked for me. I put it to work for me rather than against me. I used it again. I used the sound of my tinnitus against itself in like a mental jujitsu, and it was it was remarkably effective. So there'll be I'll I'll talk a lot more about this technique. Um, that's the foundation of what worked for me, but it goes a lot deeper than that. Um, I I've been able to use visualization as part of the tinnitus meditation to help me. Um, to help reveal different aspects of the tinnitus and 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 show show myself that it wasn't as fixed as a problem as it seemed. It wasn't just this constant noise. There was there was more nuance to it. Um, my perception and the volume could change, and so over time I was able to develop this whole system of of but all all based around this foundational tinnitus focused meditation approach. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll talk more about this in the future, uh, but hopefully I have answered some of your questions. Thanks, everybody.